handcrafts reflect the people, their work, their recreations, the line and color of their way of life. Under the direction of Mary Black of the Handcrafts and Home Industries Department of Nova Scotia, craftsmen of this province interpret what they see about them through their crafts. A pattern that is part of Canada is hooked into rugs from native wolves, molded into pottery from native clays, and carved from native woods. Mrs. Fox, a skilled artist, shows how designs may be interpreted. A Nova Scotian knows the lines of water birds that suggest a pattern for a rug. He knows the curl of shells, turned by repetition into a design in wool. Look out the wind, there's the pattern of dykeland seen from Blomidon. Rows of ploughed red fields trimmed with green. Designs are everywhere, subjects for a hooked wool rug, a painting, or a song. crafts are very old. Some materials and designs are traditional, handed down from Scott and Acadian ancestors with the spinning wheels themselves. Then spinning was part of the daily work, and often feet grew weary on the treadle. Today these same crafts may be to some a relaxation, and to others an art. For there is pleasure in creating colorful designs, whether it is cutting out the canvas backing for rugs, or drawing and filling in the design. Each part of the work requires its own special skill. These rug makers of Chetacan know their basic materials well. They raise the wool for their rugs on their own farms. They dye the yarns themselves to get just the right color. Most of the dyes they use are chemical ones, but some craftsmen like Mrs. Stronach experiment with the vegetable dyes in bark and roots. It takes four pounds of yellow birch to dye one pound of wool. Yellow birch gives a rich yellow brown. Its color varies with the season. The bark gathered in the spring gives a light shade. If collected later in the year, it yields a darker tone. The intensity of the color is determined by the chemical bath in which the yarn is soaked before dyeing, and by the length of time the yarn is boiled in the dye kettle. Natural dyes mellow gradually and blend, becoming lovelier with the passage of the years. 
They retain the soft color of the landscape to which they once belonged. Angora rabbits provide a new material for spinning and weaving. Angora wool is soft and warm. It is spun into yarn for caps and mitts, evening wraps and blankets. Up in Cape Breton at the Gaelic Foundation Craft Center, students come in the summer to take a four weeks course in handcrafts. Here they learn how to weave, making fine articles for sale or their own use. When they return home, they will teach others how to work out new designs. Many of these girls, McPhersons, Campbells, Stewarts, and McDonalds, learn how to weave the traditional tartan patterns of their clans. Once a year, the Highland Maud brings the clansmen to the craft center. Here, there's a traditional greeting, a thousand welcomes to New Scotland. They reenact a milling frolic to the tune of Gaelic songs, rubbing the cloth across rough boards, match the fibers together. The work is measured in song. <laughs> One after another, dancers try to win a coveted medal as they interpret the traditional sword dance. For this is what the mod is, a contest of skills in song and dance, a meeting of the clans. <laughs> 